In this video, we will look at how to use pSpice to simulate the natural and step response of a first order RC or RL circuit. Consider the first RC circuit shown here. This component is a single pole single throw switch which closes at time t equals to zero. The capacitor has an initial voltage of 10 volts across it. When the switch closes, the initial energy stored in the capacitor is dissipated through the resistor. This is an example of the RC circuit natural response because the stored energy in a capacitor is being suddenly released to a resistive network. It can be shown that the voltage across the capacitor is given by this expression shown here and the time constant is 1 milliseconds. Let's see how we can use pSpice to obtain this natural response. In order to simulate this circuit in pSpice, we need paths resistor, capacitor and switch. In pSpice, we can set the value of the resistor and the capacitor. For the capacitor, IC stands for initial condition and we can use this field to set the initial voltage across the capacitor. pSpice has two single pole single throw switches. Switch close closes at specified time T close and switch open opens at specified time T open. pSpice does not have a single pole double throw switch. However, we can use the two single pole single throw switches to mimic the behavior of a single pole double throw switch. Each of these switches is modeled as follows. When the switch is closed, it functions like a 0.01 ohm resistance that is effectively a short circuit. When the switch is open, it functions like a 100 mega ohm resistance that is effectively an open circuit. T tran indicates the time it takes to close the switch, which is set to one microsecond. So effectively the switch closes almost instantaneously. In order to obtain the natural response, in order to obtain the natural response, we need to run the transient analysis in pSpice. In transient analysis, we need to configure the print step. This is the step size that pSpice uses to analyze and plot the waveforms. We also need to configure the final time, which is the total simulation duration. This is the same circuit constructed in pSpice. By default, pSpice only shows the component values in the schematics. For the capacitor, we can display the initial voltage on the schematic as follows. Double click the capacitor. We untick the non-changeable and system defined attributes. Click on initial condition and click on change display and select both name and value and click OK, OK. This now shows the initial voltage across the capacitor on the schematic. For this circuit, the time constant is one millisecond. Hence, in analysis, setup, transient, we set the final time to 10 milliseconds. This is more than five time constants or five milliseconds and we set the print step to one microsecond. We use the voltage marker to see the voltage across the capacitor. When we click simulate, we get the natural response of the RC circuit, that is the voltage across the capacitor. We can read values on this plot as follows. Toggle the cursor on, and now we can move this cursor to read the values. First, we are interested in the peak value. So we can label this and this is showing that the voltage at time T0 is 10 volts. 
after five time constants have passed at five milliseconds the value is less than one percent so is very nearly zero the time constant for this circuit is one millisecond so we can move the cursor to one millisecond and then we can mark the cursor location with the value using this button so this is showing that the value is approximately 37 percent of the initial value we can compare this piece by solution with the theoretical solution as follows we go to trace add trace and here we can see all the voltage and current waveforms since we are interested in the voltages we untick these boxes and now we can enter the theoretical expression here so here the expression is 10 times exp minus 1000 multiplied by time here time is representing the internal piece by time vector and when we click ok we can see that the trace added and the piece spice result match perfectly so this confirms the solution obtained by p spice let us take a look at the second example in this circuit we have a single pole double throw switch the switch is in position a for a very long time and then at times t equals to zero it moves to position b in this circuit when the switch is at position a the capacitor is initially charged to 100 volts the time constant for this is 5 milliseconds therefore we can say that the charging is completed in about 25 milliseconds when the switch moves to position b the energy stored in the capacitor is now dissipated in the resistive network this is therefore an example of the natural response of an rc circuit the voltage across the capacitor is given by this expression and the time constant is 40 milliseconds this is the same circuit constructed in p spice we use two single pole single throw switches to mimic the behavior of the single pole double throw switch the first switch opens as at time t equals to 40 milliseconds this is greater than 25 milliseconds so allows capacitor charging to take place the second single pole single throw switch is open initially and then it closes at time t 40 milliseconds and this allows the initial energy stored in the capacitor to be dissipated across the resistive network for this p spice transient simulation we set the final time equal to 40 milliseconds which is greater than 25 milliseconds to allow initial charging to take place and then we look at we add six more time constants so we look at a total simulate uh, we look at a total uh, duration of 280 milliseconds this is the circuit in p spice when we simulate we obtain the natural response of this rc circuit we can read the plot values as follows we use this button to toggle the cursor on and then we can use this button to position the cursor at the peak value and we can mark this cursor location so this value is showing that after 40 milliseconds the capacitor voltage is very close to 100 volts at 40 milliseconds the switching occurs and after this the capacitor discharges through the resistor network and eventually the capacitor voltage reaches zero volts and this occurs when all the energy stored in the capacitor has been dissipated in the resistive network 
From this plot, we can find the time it takes for the capacitor voltage to reach a certain value as follows. Here, click on trace and eval goal function. We untick all boxes except for voltages and analog, which corresponds to time. We use the x at nth y command. Here, the first argument is the is corresponds to the desired voltage, which is voltage across the capacitor. So we select this option. The second parameter is the desired voltage value. Suppose we are interested in when the capacitor voltage reaches 50 volts. So we set this equal to 50. The third argument is the occurrence. So here we are not interested in the first occurrence because this is before switching takes place. We are interested in the second occurrence, which is after switching takes place. So we set the third argument equal to two. And when we click OK, this is showing that at 67.3 milliseconds, 67.3 milliseconds, the voltage across the capacitor is 50 volts. Since in our case, the switching occurs at 40 milliseconds, so this means that after 27.3 milliseconds, the capacitor voltage has now decreased from 100 volts to 50 volts. Let's consider this third example. In this circuit, it can be shown that the initial voltage across the capacitor is 30 volts and it takes approximately 18.75 milliseconds for this charging to be completed initially when the switch is at position A. After switching occurs and the switch moves to position B, there is a sudden application of this 75 volt source. Hence, in this case, energy is acquired by the capacitor and this is an example of the step response of an RC circuit. The voltage across the capacitor is given by this expression and the time constant is 10 milliseconds. This figure shows the same circuit constructed in PSPICE and we can use two single pole single throw switches to mimic the behavior of this single pole double throw switch. This is the same circuit in PSPICE. When we simulate, we obtain the step response of this RC circuit. We can see that Initially, the capacitor is charged to about 30 volts and after switching occurs, then the voltage across the capacitor changes and eventually the voltage across the capacitor reaches about minus 60 volts. This shows another way to simulate the same circuit in piecewise. Here we are not simulating the circuit before switching. Instead, we indicate that the capacitor has an initial voltage of 30 volts and at time t is equal to zero, this switch closes. So now there is sudden application of the 75 volt source. When we simulate, we obtain the step response of this RC circuit We can confirm this solution as follows. Go to trace, add trace, and here we can type the theoretical expression for the step response. In this case, this is minus 60 plus 90 multiplied by EXP minus 100 multiplied by time. And when we click OK, we can see that the added trace and the PSPICE result match perfectly. So this shows that the PSPICE solution for the step response is confirmed. We can also use PSPICE to simulate first order RL circuits. For the inductor, similar to the capacitor, the IC field 
can be used to set any initial current flowing through the inductor. This is the fourth and last example. Here we consider an RL circuit. The single pole double throw switch is initially at position B. Under steady state, this current source produces a minus 8 amp current flowing through the inductor. The current is minus 8 amp because the assumed direction of initial current is opposite to the direction of this current source. At time t is equal to 0, the switch moves to position A. In this case, there is a sudden application of the DC voltage source and energy is acquired by the inductor. This is therefore a case of the step response of an RL circuit. The time constant in this case is 0.1 second and the current through the inductor can be shown to be equal to this expression shown here. This circuit can be simulated in PSPICE. Similar to before, we use two single pole single throw switches to mimic the behavior of the single pole double throw switch. This is the same circuit in PSPICE. We use the current marker to look at the current through the inductor. When we simulate, we obtain the step response of the RL circuit. We can see that after 0.2 seconds, at this point, the inductor current is nearly minus 8 amps and after switching occurs, the inductor current increases and finally approximately reaches 12 amps. So this part of the curve is the step response of the RL circuit. We can also look at voltages in this circuit. Suppose we are interested in the voltage across this resistor. In this case, we cannot use the voltage marker to look at the voltage across this resistor. This is because no end of this resistor is connected to ground and this voltage marker only shows voltages at nodes with respect to ground. In order to look at the voltage across this resistor, we go into markers, mark voltage differential, and now we can put voltage markers on either side of this resistor. And when we simulate, we can now look at the voltage across the resistor. So this shows how we can simulate our first order RC and RL circuits and look at voltages and currents in these circuits.